In order to interact with our code repositories on GitHub, we need to authenticate that we have the correct permissions to do so. In other words, if I wanted to make changes to this private repository, I need to show that I am actually the owner of that repository. And the way we do that on the github.com website is we simply just log in with our credentials and assuming those credentials are correct, we'll have the access to uh, work with any of the repositories connected with our account. Now switching context, let's say I'm working on my computer via command line and I want to interface with the GitHub servers and my repositories there. Uh, for example, let's say I wanted to clone this private repository. I could grab the SSH uh, address for the repository. I could come over here and say git clone. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to need something called an SSH key pair set up between my computer and the GitHub servers in order to authenticate this request. Um, otherwise, and I'll go ahead and show this now, you can see that it's failing. It says permission denied. Uh, please make sure you have the correct access rights. All right, so I have not properly authenticated myself in order to complete this request. All right, so knowing that, uh, how do we set up SSH key pairs? Well, let me go over to the notes that accompany this video, and I have a diagram just to see what we're going to be aiming for. And here you can see there are two keys that make up our key pair. There's a private key that's gonna exist on the computer or server that you're trying to connect from. And then there's a corresponding public key that you're gonna put on the GitHub servers. And these two keys are made to go together. They're these encrypted values that you're gonna uh, generate. And the SSH protocol, which is what we're using when we talk to the GitHub servers, is gonna be looking for these keys and making sure they're a match. And assuming they're a match, that is what is gonna authenticate us and uh, basically identify our, our systems, our computers, our servers with the GitHub servers. So with that big picture goal in mind, let's talk about how do we generate these key pairs? How do we get the public key installed on the GitHub server? Uh, and the first step is to move into the SSH directory on our computer or server that we're trying to connect from. This is where you're going to put your uh, key pairs. And on many systems, this directory should just exist. So you could copy this command directly as it's written in the notes and attempt to run it in your command line program. And uh, it might take you into that directory or it might tell you that that directory doesn't exist. Maybe you haven't done anything with SSH keys in the past. It was never created. Uh, if that's the case, coming back to the notes, uh, you could just simply create that directory. So you can use the make directory command, create it, and then you should be able to change into it. All right, now once you're in that directory, the next command we're gonna run is this SSH key gen command. This is what's gonna initiate our key pair for us. And the only thing you're gonna to wanna to change here, you're gonna to wanna to use all of these flags and settings I have, but at the very end, you just need some descriptive identifier for this key. Um, in my case, I'm gonna be setting this up from my uh, laptop, so I'm just gonna call my key Susan's MacBook. Uh, you can name it after your computer, you could name it after the server you might be creating this for, it really doesn't matter, just some descriptive identifier. All right, so I'm gonna copy this exactly as is and come back over to command line and paste that in. And uh, like I said, in your case, you would just wanna edit this uh, ending string. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And the first thing it's gonna prompt me for is a file name to use for this key. Uh, and for this, I'm gonna call mine Susan's MacBook. I'm basically gonna be using the same identifier I did for the key, but I'm just gonna make it all lowercase just so it's file name friendly. Um, the other thing I could do is not enter anything here and just leave it as the default, which is ID underscore RSA. That would also work. But if you're going to be working with multiple keys, it's nice just to have um, a more descriptive file name for each of them. All right, so call it whatever you want and then uh, hit enter to get to the next step. The next step, it's gonna ask you for a passphrase for this key. And if you're dealing with highly sensitive work, let's say you're building a site for like a financial institution, um, adding an additional passphrase is just gonna be another level of security on your connections that might be desirable. But for the average case, uh, SSH keys alone, even without a passphrase are very, very secure. So I'm just gonna hit enter. Uh, it'll ask me to um, confirm that passphrase and because I didn't enter any, I'll just hit enter again. And then you should get a final confirmation that the keys were generated. All right, so let's take a look at the contents of our SSH directory now to see the resulting keys. So I'm just gonna run a list command and you should see two new files named after the key name that you chose. So here is my first one, Susan's MacBook. This file without any extension, this is the private key. And then there should be a corresponding public key with the same name and then it ends with a .pub extension. And just jumping back to the notes and our diagram, uh, what we just created, we created the private key on our computer or server. And then the public key was also generated on our computer and server. And so the next step is to take a copy of that public key and get it on the GitHub servers. 
All right, and the way we're going to do that, if we go over to GitHub, uh, go ahead and log in if you're not already logged in, and then go into your settings. And then under your settings, find this option for SSH and GPG keys. And then find the button for new SSH key. And then we're going to fill in the information for this key. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a title. And I'm going to name it after the key itself. So this is, in my case, it's Susan's MacBook.pub. Uh, for key type, there's two different types here. Um, we're going to go with authentication key. This is going to be the key we need for uh, general interaction with our repositories. Um, the signing key is a, a special key you could use to verify the ownership of commits that are going to your repositories. That's something you might want to create separately, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to go ahead and stick with authentication key. All right, and then for the key itself, we're going to go back to our system and get a copy of this public key. So I'm just going to use the cat command here to um, cat is short for concatenate. It's just going to output the contents of a file. So I wanted to output the contents of my public key. And then I could go ahead and copy this. So starting with SSH RSA and then ending with that identifier I gave it when I first generated the key. I want to grab this entire string, copy that come back and then paste that in as the contents of my key. And then we'll go ahead and add that SSH key. And then you should see a list of keys that have been added in GitHub. In my case, I have many. Uh, if this is the first time you're working with keys in GitHub, you might just see the one that you just added. All right, so with that added, coming back to our diagram, we should have this setup complete. We have the private key on our computer or server we're connecting from, and then we have the corresponding public key on the GitHub servers. So at this point, we're almost ready to test this, but there's one more step we have to take on our systems we're connecting from, and that's to configure our SSH protocol to attempt to use the key pair that we just generated when we go to bake SSH connections. Uh, and this step is only necessary if you used a custom key name like I did. If you stuck with the default of IDRSA, the SSH protocol is just going to attempt to use that by default. No special configs are necessary. Uh, but in my case, because I did use a custom key name, I do have to do this additional step. Uh, and it's real simple. All we want to do is locate or create this file called config within our SSH directory. And to edit this file, I'm just going to use the built-in command line text editor nano. So I'm just going to say nano config. And in my case, because I already have a config file, it's just going to open that existing file to edit it. If you don't have a config file yet, this will go ahead and create it for you. All right, so nano config. All right, and you can see the existing contents of my config file. I have a bunch of configs in here. Uh, if you're generating this config file for the first time, you might see this blank. That's OK. Uh, regardless of what you see in here, just at the very top, what we want to do is we want to add a line. And uh, just to reference the notes so you can copy it from there. The line we want to add is this line right here, identity file, and then we want to specify the path to the private key that we just made. All right, so in my case, I can copy this directly as it is in the notes, and I'll just add this at the very top. And you can see in my case, there's actually some other keys I have referenced here for some other work and examples I've done. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to exit and save my changes. The way we do that in Nano is we hold down Control X. We type Y to confirm that we want to save our changes, and then we just hit Enter. And then we should be ready to test this out. We want to see now if we can communicate with the GitHub servers and uh, see if we're authenticated to do so. Uh, and the way we can do that, coming to the very end of this note set, there's a command we can run to test this. We're just going to attempt an SSH connection to the GitHub servers. So let's copy this test command. All right, what we want to see in response here is a message just like this. It says, hi, and it should have your GitHub username. It says you've successfully authenticated, but GitHub does not provide shell access. Uh, basically, what this is saying here, you can't directly just SSH into the GitHub servers and like work on the GitHub servers. Uh, but as long as it recognizes us and it says that we are successful, any future Git commands we run against the GitHub servers should work. Um, and just to show this, let's try that command I ran at the very beginning of this video where I tried to clone that private repository. I should be able to do it now. Uh, so let me just get it out of my SSH directory just to someplace I can clone this. And we'll go back to GitHub. And I'll just jump back in my history to that uh, Code with Susan private repository to grab the SSH address for it. And then back in command line, I'm going to say git clone. 
And there you go. You can see it's going through the process of actually cloning it. It didn't uh, immediately fail like it did previously. So uh, obviously I was authenticated to complete that action. All right, and that's the outcome we're looking for. That should work moving forward, even for other repositories on your account. As long as you are authenticated and have access to them, you should be able to interact with them. Uh, now, if you got to this point and it failed, let's say you're still seeing permission denied. I just want to point you uh, back to the notes at the very end. There's some troubleshooting tips on things to try. Actually, you have a whole separate guide on what to do when you're attempting to make an SSH connection and you see permission denied. Uh, there's some steps that you can go through there. And of course, if none of that gets you unstuck and you're still having problems, feel free to leave a comment below uh, with the details of what issues you're facing. And I'll be happy to uh, try to point you in the right direction.